Since the beginning when the moving trucks loaded up here and in the middle of the night made the trip from Baltimore to Indy, the Colts have had their fair share of bizarre moments. Yeah, the current coaching search ranks right up there. That search ramping back up this morning. In less than 12 hours after the Colts announcing Josh McDaniels would be the next coach, he went back to New England. Yeah, pretty crazy. Here's how we got here. According to ESPN, the Patriots owner worked out a new deal to bring McDaniels back to the Patriots. That deal has not yet been Release. The Colts say in part they were surprised and disappointed by the move and they're now looking for the right fit to lead the team. All right, now that the shock of losing McDaniels is wearing off here, we ha he heads back to New England. The Colts are now turning their attention, obviously, to who's next. Yeah, a list of candidates for the job is starting to come together. So here's a look at who could be in the running. Chief Special Teams Coordinator Dave Tom, former Colts assistant, and current Eagles offensive coordinator Frank Reich, a few other coaches with Colts ties, could also be under consideration. There is no timetable for when the team will make a decision. So now we just sit and wait. It's are being made for a former IU basketball star. Family members say Daryl Thomas died of a heart attack. Thomas was a part of IU's 1987 national championship team. During his time in Bloomington, he was a two-year starter. Thomas playing a key role in one of IU's most famous plays, the Keith Smart shot. I closed my eyes and prayed. And I was like, Keith, hit it, please. I opened my eyes and I just saw it going through the net. I knew. And we was up by one, and I was hoping the tower would have ran down, but it didn't, so we had to set up for another play. Thomas with the pass before the shot, etching his place in Hoosier history. He was 52 years old. Well, this morning, the Colts begin their search for a new head coach. This after Chuck Pagano was let go after six seasons. The Colts were able to end the Pagano era on a high note with a win over the Texans yesterday. Pagano ended his time in Indy with a record of 53 and 45. In 2012, Pagano won over Indianapolis with the Chuck Strong campaign after he was diagnosed with leukemia. Yesterday, Pagano was given the game ball and he thanked his football family for the time they had together. It's my football family in there, uh, those players and coaches. And, um, you know, I've always been about relationships. It's always been about love with me. It's always been about connection. And uh, the price of love is sometimes is it, you know, you have to, uh, you have to say goodbye. The Colts finished the season 4-12. and It's the team's first losing season in six years. Indianapolis, as they search for a new head coach, they'll also focus on the upcoming draft. The Colts will have the third pick. A historic win for the Warren Central Warriors. They were able to cap off an undefeated season with a state championship. The game went back and forth, but the, Warri the Warriors were able to outlast Carmel 54-48, to finishing the season 31-0. This was also the first time a boys and girls team from the same school took home the 4A title in the same year. Today marks the official start of a new era for the Colts. The team will officially introduce new head coach Frank Reich. Team owner Jim Ursay and GM Chris Ballard will be there to welcome him to Indy. We're also expected to learn more about his plans for the team and what he'll be focusing on during his first season. A lot of people looking forward to hearing from him later today, Todd. Regular season is winding down for the Pacers and they're looking to end it on a high note. Indiana is on a five-game winning streak after yesterday's victory over the L.A. Clippers. Victor Oladipo led the way with 30 points. The Pacers wrap up their road trip tomorrow in Denver to take on the Nuggets. The Blue and Gold only have five games left in the regular season. Right, well, the Final Four is set for this year's tournament, but on this day 39 years ago, one of college basketball's most memorable games was getting set to tip off. It was the 1979 National Championship game between Michigan Michigan State and Indiana State, or Magic Johnson versus Larry Bird. Now, while Bird and the Sycamores did come up short, they still got a homecoming worthy champion. Hundreds of fans showing up the airport to welcome that team home, even a flyover, all to congratulate the team on their historic season. Very interesting. Yeah. Didn't know that. No, you know, I mean, it was it was guys. huge. Obviously, you have Michigan State, this big powerhouse of a school. Right, then yeah. you have little Indiana little State. I was just kind of thinking sycamores. about if the party is still probably going strong this morning in Philadelphia. This was the scene as people filled the streets after the Eagles Super Bowl win. Police even getting in on the celebration there. Now you can see it got a little too rowdy in some areas, tipping a car over and some street lights even came down. This all after the Eagles were able to top the Patriots 41 to 33 in Super Bowl 50. 52.